Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and today we're continuing our series with our Purpose 3D PMDG Boeing 737NG simulator. As you probably know, I am airline captain, so I really fly this uh, aircraft in one of the, our airlines in Ukraine. And uh, here is our cockpit of this magnificent simulator, and I would say it's quite realistic. So today we're going to start from the takeoff briefing, then we'll start the engines and do the before taxi procedures, and after that we'll taxi while here. By the way, we are in Prague Airport, and after that we'll do the before takeoff procedure, and the takeoff itself will be in another video. Pam pam. I have already done with the cockpit preparation, with pre-fly cockpit preparation from cold and dark to this state, so we are almost ready for startup or engine start. I have already done with the CDU pre-flight, CDU is uh, this thing over here, so that's the CDU pre-flight, you may check out all the videos on my channel, you may check out my previous videos, but here let's start from the briefing. The briefing itself, it well, it should explain uh, your takeoff, your taxi, and your takeoff routes. It's uh, there are many types of briefing. Like we use rats, weather restrictions, abnormal terrain, and some special. So you need to mention that whole in your briefing. So here we'll start from just from the taxi route. So I'm gonna go to the taxi chart which we have over here. So it's a Prague Airport, the original Prague Airport. So our location is here from runway three zero. So I would just say. Okay, expect uh, the flight number, Pilot Force uh, 101, we expect taxi from runway 30, so we're gonna take this runway, then we'll turn right to the Gulf, take takes away Hotel Juliet, and then uh, Alpha Main takes away, and we'll take the full runway length. Runway well, the length is 3,715 meters, which is quite okay for us, and I can mention the takeoff uh, performance for us so here you can open the CDU page yeah, and one page this one so our reduce is 43 the durate is 22 kilo and I can also mention the speeds that we already calculated so V1 146 rotate 147 V2 148 and I can check everything on the MCP panel and then we continue with the uh, departure route so here we may choose the different different type of view on navigation display i can put it to flight plan to plan to see the departure chart over here so I'll make it larger for you to see so just and also i need to cross check it with the cdu so here's the CDU and I may check the legs page. Here we have speed restrictions for departure and and maybe altitude restrictions if we have. Here on our departure chart we don't have. And you just say we expect departure. Which one? Just go to RT next. Was it say Victor Oscar Zulu's real alpha departure, which we have and just cross check the points and check also cross check with your departure scheme so here we have was it a three alpha departure so cross check with your uh, electronic flyback or with your hard copy of Jepson or whatever navigation chart you use so just climb straight ahead 9 nautical miles to Papa Romeo 402 and you constantly cross check with your what is set in your computer flight management computer so uh, 9 nautical miles and then turn to the left on track 149 to point Papa Romeo 403 then to the left again to Papa Romeo 404 and next to was it say and also you may check your navigation data which can be set for departure so we set was it say over here here we have uh, VRT me in our airport. This one, Oscar Kilo Lima. So it's already set in our navigation uh, navigation panel over here and here. Next, move to your chart again, just to confirm your initial climb clearance. Initial climb clearance is 5,000 feet. Was it real alpha? Just uh, 
here is the explanation I don't I'm not sure whether you can see it so here is the explanation of your chart detailed explanation here we have some speed restrictions uh, speed to 50 below 10,000 for jets yeah we'll do it according to our SID transition altitude to 5,000 feet which is okay so at this altitude we should set Q and E which is uh, standard pressure enough one is required yes we we are okay with that contact pro radar immediately after takeoff okay we'll do that the frequency for prag radar we may preset that frequency in our communication uh, panel over here in our radio panel so we may preset it uh, after we'll contact with the tower I'll show it to you later. Also, you may allow the minimum sector altitude. The highest one for us is 3,900 here, and all non-normals for departure. Maybe for gradient, but we don't actually need that gradient because for both engines working, we should be more than five percent of gradient for sure. But you you may check it out using your QRH table or something or your software. But anyway, call out any non-standard for departure, for particular running, for particular airport in your briefing. Then you finish with that part, you can continue with the standard VRATS briefing. So we use VRATS abbreviation in our airline. There could be many, depends on your particular airline, but we use VRATS. So the first letter W, whiskey stands for weather. So weather, you should explain what what should you expect during your departure. So whether it's snowy, whether it's rainy, should you use the engine RTIs during that condition, or should you do the de-icing ground de-icing procedures? Should you do the should you expect the wind shear in your takeoff? Should you expect maybe thunderstorm? So everything considering the weather information. The next letter R stands for restrictions. So we already have you know that we have the restrictions for this Prague airport to maintain speed to 50 below 10,000. It could be many of restrictions according to your standard instrument departure or maybe you have some other performance restrictions for your particular flight, for your particular airplane. So you need to call out them to your partner. Plus, you may call out the noise abatement procedure that you are going to use in this particular airport for a particular runway. And the next letter a stands for abnormal so maybe you have some kind of males minimum equipment list items uh, cdls dmis open maybe you have specific not time maybe some part of the runway is not uh, in operative is in operative condition so you need to taxi a little bit more maybe your distance shorten a little bit so you need to tell everything in this abnormal chapter the next letter t tango stands for terrain so you if you have specific terrain in your airport in your departure your route you need to explain how you will fly it so for example you climb straight ahead maintaining gradient of seven percent for example until reaching 10,000 feet will retract the flaps a little bit later so maybe we'll use improved crime climb uh, characteristics to overfly some kind of obstacle or maybe we'll use full takeoff thrust to for that gradient the next letter s sierra stands for specific so here you can explain how you will how are you going to fly this aircraft if you are pilot flying of course the briefing is done by by the pilot flying pilot monitoring listen to this briefing and call out some, any suggestions you know so pilot flying tells how uh, in specific uh, part he or she tells how uh, he or she will operate with uh, this mode control panel with the automatic flight control system so whether you want to fly in low change or wind off in specific part we also may call out some uh, fuel information uh, whether it's okay for us to have the, the specific amount of fuel whether it's okay for us to taxi maybe we need to refuel I don't know uh, so also we may call out the bird information then you finish with rats part of the briefing you may continue with engine out procedure so that could be a standard engine out procedure like we have in Prague airport 
or they could be special in genome procedure like maybe in some kind of mountain area where the terrain is the great factor influencing your SID so for example you may lose uh, one engine so you the aircraft wouldn't be able to climb as fast as uh, with two engines so of course a cl climb gradient will reduce and you need specific route to follow engine out route for the special runway and it's designed for the safe operation you should climb and follow the special engine out procedure special engine out route and you'll be safe by following it so it may be different with SID, with your standard instrument departure. But we don't have special engine out procedure for our runway, so that is why I'll call out the standard one. So in case we have engine failure at V1 or after one, continue, positive rate, gear up, no any actions until passing 400 feet. At 400 feet, heading select, so we press just heading select over here and check engine status, perform memory items, after that call out to ATC, passing uh, 2034 feet which is our IFRA acceleration altitude with a uh, one engine inoperative uh, check speed for flaps up for modern airplanes using VNAV you'll have automatic speed increasement for uh, flaps up minimum maneuvering speed if there is no increasement just set speed for flaps up retract the flaps flaps up no lights set level change over here level change this button uh set mct oh okay sorry so here in the cdu you set maximum continuous thrust and then according to procedure so you need to open non-normal checklists after memory items you done with memory items you accelerate your aircraft you retract the flaps you stabilize it here by the way don't forget to set a minimum sector altitude uh, the maximum minimum sector altitude for your sector uh, which in, this, in our case should be, let it be 4,000 feet, just in case. And you climb to this altitude and uh, then you climb, you open non-normal checklist, then you cross-check your memory items, which should be already completed. And after that, perform non-normal checklist, and after that, after takeoff checklist, and after that, uh, one engine operative landing or you may also perform engine in flight star checklist it depends on the circumstances but today we are not talking about engine failure today we are talking about the briefing so let's continue the last part of the briefing usually contains the rejected takeoff procedure so you should call out it loud so before 80 knots we will reject in case of uh, master caution so here's master caution, system failure, side window open, tire failure, aircraft abnormal soil acceleration, unusual noise or vibration, engine failure, fire fall warning, aircraft unsafe, unable to fly, predict, predicted wind shear, and takeoff configuration warning. After 80 knots to V1, reject only in case of engine failure, Fire, fire warning, aircraft unsafe, unable to fly, or predicted wind shear. And also, you should call out the rejected takeoff pilot's actions. So, what should happen in a cockpit in case of rejected takeoff? Uh, for example, I'm captain, I'm pilot flying for this flight, so my briefing will sound like this. In case of rejected takeoff, I call reject, it means I have control. Then I simultaneously close SAS levers, disengage the auto throttle, apply manual brakes or check out to brake in use, please. Uh, speed brake, up, reverse, apply. Uh, then first officer should call me 60 knots. Then uh, stop on the runway, don't use the parking brake. I will call to passenger address. Attention, cabin crew at stations. My first officer will call pilot force 101, stopping on the runway. Then we'll perform memory items and evacuation checklist if needed. If no need for memory items, I call again to passenger address, cabin crew, normal operation, and we perform the QRH brake cooling schedule uh, table, we'll just do it, and then locate the runway and decide what to do next, to take off again or we should wait for our brakes to cool down. So it will be like this. Wow, it's getting dark as you can see here. But let's start with the before engine start procedures. Pum, pum. All right, my friends, I have just uh, turned everything to the morning time because I would like to see everything inside the cockpit as well as from the outside. And here we'll just start with the before engine start procedure. And you may start this procedure only after you set everything in your 
CDU, in your MCP, in, well, in your aircraft basically, then doors are closed and everyone on board. You need to commence this procedure first and after that only you need to uh, request the engine start. So let's start. Uh, I disabled my ISDO camera so go to the overhead panel over here and we'll do like this. I think it will be more useful. The first officer performs this procedure uh, on the ground. He or she performs this procedure with the overhead panel. The captain just calls for before engine start procedure. Okay, central pumps on if you have the fuel in the central tank and the rest of the pumps should be switched on. Then we move to hydraulic panel. Uh, come on. Here, hydraulic panel. If you have the pushback expected, just leave it like this. So hydraulic pumps A off and B on. It's for your brakes and this for normal noise wheel steering. So you should select them off, at least in my airline. But we are not expecting the pushback just the engine start on this present position so we switch everything to on then you turn the anti-collision light on like this and then you go to the pedestal and you may switch if you have the pushback expected you change it to exponder position hey here we may not see but just put it in the transponder to exponder if you have the pushback expected and so then you're ready for some kind of movement you turn the transponder to the ground expo exponder position it may be alt on or exponder for the captain well you just set and check all the streams or your stop trim over here that it fits with your real value so you may check it in your Control display unit, you go to the takeoff page and check that the stream position equals to what you have set with your stop trim and also you may check all ouch uh, all your trims here the rudder trim and the aileron trim that they are free and zero. After that captain calls for the before start checklist and we have it in our courage, but usually we have hard copy just on the glare shield so here we have before start checklist first officer is performing that fuel let's go we check the total amount of fuel oh, sorry guys so we should call the 13200 kilos and six pumps on like this next uh, passenger signs Passenger signs set, so it's signs like this. It's the chime only, so we may set it also on. Uh, for pushback, system A hydraulic pump switches off. So we have system A hydraulic pump switches on because the pushback is not expected. Transponder as required. Well, before, if you expect the pushback, you may set it to uh, exponder as I said if you expect there's just the engine start leave it in standby windows locked so just cross check the this window here the captains and the first officer side windows that uh, make sure that they are closed and um, MCP with two heading altitude MCP so your mode, mode control panel V2 148 heading 241 altitude initial climb 5000 feet set and you need to confirm it both so you see windows locked you check the uh, captain side first officer checks uh, his or her side and MCP you also need to check both Take off speeds V1, we rotate V2. Let's go to our CDU. Take off speeds V1, 146, rotate 147, V2, 148. Very simple. And also, both pilots should kill out. CDU per flight. Complete it. We already checked it. Everything is done with this CDU. Uh, rudder and aileron trim. And that is what I called you the pilot should check check it free and zero 
should come out three and zero. The captain's side. Uh, taxi takeoff briefing completed. It's the captain's come out. Fly deck door closed and locked. This is the fourth officer closed and locked this door. Uh, means the door to the cockpit and doors closed for the captain so just verify that everything is like this all the lights are extinguished over here doors closed anti-collision light on check the anti-collision light that it's on here and i think that's all before start checklist completed and at this moment you may request you may call to the first officer to request the engine start so the first officer requests the engine start it's like this Prague ground good morning uh, pilot force 101 on runway 30 request start up good morning uh, pilot force 101 Prague ground start up approved start up approved uh, pilot force 101 and at this moment captain speaks with the ground ground it's not the atc it's the ramp engine besides which is responsible for the area uh, that should be clear during the engine star so we just call to him ground this ground for cockpit uh, we are created for engine start start sequence two then one so we start right engine first engine number two and then we go to the, with the left engine start sequence two then one now starting number two and the ground says okay start up uh, area is clear you may start your engines all right and then captain speaks to the first officer uh, start engine number two time check the first officer at this moment disables packs so we just switch them off because we need the air supply go to just go to our start because we have ear starter we don't need the ear supply to go to our packs so at some moment we we lose the pressurization system because we select both of the packs so the condition air condition system is not working at this moment and first officer moves the engine start switch to ground but i want to have the instruments the engine instruments over here come on go with this go with this okay start engine number two time check both packs off verify and now set to ground and you can see we have I'll just press pause here have start valve open then the ear valve and it shows that we have the pressure oh it's working even with the pals okay we have n2 rotation n2 spool is the high pressure spool so we have rotation over here and then we have 25 or maximum monitoring we have n1 we have over pressure we move just engine start lever to idle and monitor agt it should not be hmm, different star on this simulator So just to monitor the GT and monitor N2 here and fuel flow sometimes. Really strange simulator. Then 56 and 2, you just check that starter engine start switch move to off automatically and that engine start valve closed. And that this engine is already stabilized the same thing goes with uh, engine number one so start engine number one time check uh, i don't know why it's working with, even with the pals so press on the ground this selector start off open and two or pressure and one and then two reach 25 and just start it lever to idle monitor EGT the maximum for the star is 725 this sector over here well, it's, sorry guys 
I just messed it. So fix it 56 and 2. Engine start switch off. Starter cut out. And the engine is stable. I'm sorry, my friends, I messed up with this uh, display. Sh I was trying to show you more detailed information, but I ruined <laughs> the engine start showing you. Uh, I got uh, used to the real airplane, not the simulator. That's why it's so difficult for me to fly this, to operate with this uh, simulator. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, guys, after two successful engine starts, we may let the ground engine go. So. You as a captain may tell ground we have two good starts and you can disconnect see you see you and the uh, ground engine just disconnects the uh, headset with the wire from the right side and uh, he or she stands away of the airplane with the pin with the gear pin uh, if it was pushback if it wasn't the pushback so they just stay near to the airplane showing that the area uh, head is free for taxi and you may call to first officer before uh, before taxi procedure and first officer may perform the before taxi procedure so we have actually flaps uh, flaps one before taxi procedure you see the last time I was flying was two and a half months ago and I and did incorrect call out here so flaps one and before taxi Procedure generators on. This is the first officer job. Here we have probe heat on. Anti ice if required. We don't have ice in conditions. That is why we leave it like this off the anti ice system. Uh, for the hydraulic, if it was the pushback, we will set hydraulic system A on. If it wasn't, just leave it like this. Packs on isolation valve auto APU bleed switch off uh, what else here we have the APU working we may also set it uh, off engine start switch is continuous what else what else what else oh, I think also recall no on siege no on initiation just check about it first officer clouds flaps one green light over here uh, check the engines engine start levers balls at idle and we may also check this system captain just checks the controls so it's like this so if I move you see they move I move for example ailerons you see the aileron the flight spoilers to the right you see it's different elevator up down rudder right left come on it's just jammed I don't know why we have problem with the flight control system here I don't know why it's jammed have some problem with flight controls that is why you need to check it every flight <laughs> I don't know my friends it's always uh, on the right side I, I don't know why what should I do with it and what to do next but anyway we can perform the before taxi checklist so after we're done with the before taxi procedure of course we should do the before taxi checklist all right let's go before taxi checklist generators on let's go and check them we should switch them on just forgot that you need to check also the frequency and the voltage uh, for those generators and leave this switch the selector like this probe heat on should be on just check this probe heats there next anti ice as required in our case as you may see it's off anti ice off not required uh, air conditioning packs just check them oh sorry guys packs auto uh, isolation valve auto 
over here. So it's closed, it's open, now we have auto. Uh, engine start switches continuous. Engine start switches continuous over here. Um, recall check. Just press this on initiator. Flight checked for both captain and first officer. Um, where we are? Recall checked. Uh, auto brake RTO. Just check if it's an RTO. It is uh, auto brake. Okay, where we are. Engine start levers. Engine start levers. Oil detent. Just check them manually. And transponder. Yeah, before before actual taxi, you need to set it to expander and check it transponder expander flight controls uh, check but we have the problem with the rudder so if it was the real flight i would have returned to the parking stand and uh, ground equipment check clear correction ground equipment clear so we just look at the window to the right to the left and check if there there is no any obstructions or obstacles any vehicles for and you have a free taxi taxi away initial part of the taxi away for your taxi and you have this signal you need to show it to your uh, ramp agent and he or she shows you like this it means that it's clear for taxi and at that point you need to request the taxi from your air traffic control by the way first officer need to call them before taxi check is completed all right uh request the taxi clearance please uh pilot force 101 request clearance uh, pilot force 101 clear for taxi uh, take runway 30, right while Golf, Apron, Taxiway Alpha to Holding Point, runway 24. Okay, clear taxi runway 30, Golf, Apron, Alpha to Holding Point, runway 24, Power Force 101. All right, check right area, right is clear, left area is also clear. Lights for taxi and switch the lights for taxi, runway turn off light and taxi lights. Receive this clearance from the ground personnel and apply some thrust, but not usually more than 40%. And let's go to the cockpit, by the way. Sorry, like this. Maybe I should enable now the ISDOC cameras. Yeah, maybe just a, just a moment, guys. Enable. All right, and we add some some thrust, and we release the parking brake. And come on, come on, come on! Can we taxi? Can we taxi? Still goes to the right because of this rudder, you know have definitely problem with that rudder while taxi you need to check your ground speed according to your GPS it's here ground speed certain knots as you may see we have this uh, long straight line uh, for example main taxiway or you taxi through the runway you can accelerate to speed of 30 knots usually if you have if you taxi through the apron you can accelerate maximum to 20 knots over here if you taxi during the low visibility procedures in force you need to limit your taxi speed down to 10 knots if you have L turns if you have the U-turn reduce it to 10 knots just for the comfort of the passengers but I, I don't know guys I have the rudder problem over here 
I don't know why everything is working in this airplane all the systems are fine as you can see but we still have the rather full deflection to the right maybe I need to calibrate my uh, my joystick for this airplane but it's a big problem for me I cannot even normally taxi it's uh, very very bad I would say so maybe I'll just set the parking brake and stand by guys maybe I'll just calibrate my joystick and see what what I can do pum pum finally my friends I do have a very big problem here with the rudder itself because I don't know why but it's, it's move just move to the right and I cannot do anything with it so then I release my you know, joystick it's it's just move to the right I don't know why because I said everything correctly you know inside the cockpit I I put everything all the systems are nice the flight control panel set normally I did the pre-flight almost according to the book but somehow we have a rather problem over here and I cannot take off like this but this video is already very long so probably I'll film one more video I'll reset this airplane I tried to reset this simulator already but it didn't help so I'll, I'll need to set everything once again I'll put the airplane for runway to foreign Prague Virginia airport I'll set all the systems and will take off in the next simulator video my friends for now thank you very much for watching it was interesting I think for you for me it was quite a boring stuff but I need to remember I need to recall the procedures because maybe soon our airline will start flying again I know who you are you are awesome guy because you are watching my videos and to prove that you need to follow awesome guy checklist so first like this video then subscribe to my channel then ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching and have a great time